this is the first lecture on the book of acts let me give you some general information first before we go on so please stay with me because this is kind of technical and i would like you to know exactly what we expect from you we have a number of objectives we, we would like you to do certain things first of all we would like you to read the whole book of acts that's 28 chapters that's done in one and a half hour and you have the whole story so i would like you to do that but more than that okay because we are talking about certain things in the book of acts not only are we speaking about the acts of the disciples or the acts of the apostles but we're looking at things like the resurrection jesus resurrection the ascension jesus ascension the kingdom of god the promise of the father the baptism in the holy spirit Th those are things uh, they are major in in this book I would like you to note the role and the qualifications of these apostles. They are witnesses of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And then we look at Luke himself. Luke set the stage for a whole range of great things that are happening in the beginning of the church. So that's one thing. And now I have to be a little bit more technical even because I, uh, I have to tell you that we are an institution that holds to the historical conservative Christian faith which includes the firm belief in the inerrance of the scriptures since the text and audio content provided by say to represent a, a whole range of evangelical traditions all of the ideas and the principles conveyed in the resources materials are not necessarily affirmed in total by this ministry let's now look at the issue of studying the book of acts when we say we study the book of acts what are we saying well, we are saying that uh, we are not reading a, a letter. We are reading a book with story. We're reading a book with sermons. We're reading a book where letters are included. So, not a letter, but a book you have to read that different from a letter because a letter that will convey uh, warnings that convey uh, things people have to do in the near future or they are expected to do because of the fact that they are christians or christianized this this book is a storybook about the workings of two characters one is the holy spirit the holy spirit is is the uh, the line the red line going through the book of acts next to that red line you have another red line and that is jesus christ that's the second person so you have those two going through the whole book of acts so you have to read this book in in that way thinking about but also being open to what is being said and what is being presented to us in almost all the biblical stories all over the bible the writer is not going to tell you 
the key point or the main point of what he is uh, speaking about or what God wants him to talk about because that was not in the in this situation in the system of that time or those times actually that's only recently being I cannot say discovered but uh, it's more a habit that writers have or people who are doing explanations they say okay this is what we are looking for this is where we're going that is not what you find in the book of Acts and you don't find that in the uh, in the sermons uh, and in the letters who are included in this book when you read the book you yourself have to find the clues you yourself have to find the story you yourself have to see what is going on and uh, a number of things you have to do for example you have to look for uh, not just reading but thinking about what can I learn from this specific specific passage or specific chapter in this book is there a an example I can follow is the teaching I have to obey is there a doctrine of the church and we have to look at those things so the first thing and that is important the first thing you have to do before reading before thinking is praying and that's exactly what we are going to do now father in heaven Lord, we thank you for this course and we pray lord that your name will be glorified in what we do say and pray may your name be glorified in all this this we pray in the name of our lord and savior jesus christ amen We start with prayer. If you read this this book of Acts for the first time, you have to do something. And that is in prayer confess your sins. In prayer repent of your sins. In prayer, you have, to, you have to have the right attitude towards God. Ask God for wisdom when you study, when you read. Ask God for spiritual growth. When you do that, then you're on the, on the right way. Number two, so the first one was start with prayer. The second one is get the big picture. We will go through uh, a number of lectures and one thing I would like to do is get the big picture but also in some cases we have to go to the the minute details of certain things because many things that are in the book of acts uh, and are interpreted today and in many cases for a long time are actually not according to the biblical standards because many people in the past they hear something or they heard something and they said uh, the, sa the same thing and they thought that was automatically right because the pastor said it or the theologian said it or the pope said it or the bishop whatever whoever and they just automatically accepted that and that is the wrong way the bible teaches us that the holy spirit is helping us with this specific part getting the picture and getting the big picture when we talk about the book of acts uh, we are not talking about uh, the apostle james well, he's part of the story but only a small or minute part of the story you will find john yeah the apostle john a minute part of the of the book is dedicated to that person The overall majority of the text goes about Peter and Paul. So we need to have the big story. What is the story about Peter? What is the story about Paul? So carefully read 
the entire story and then you can go and you can feel the sense and the flow of, of this the story in there uh, then you have to ask yourself what what themes are there in that book uh, and then and that's a good thing that is putting a title on the specific story so you read the story you read the total story and then you put a title when you for example when we look at at the whole book of the book of acts and the book of acts is called the book of acts of the apostles but in reality it speaks about peter and paul and a little bit about john a little bit about james so where are the eight other apostles well one of them is is named specifically because we have uh, we have his name in uh, in the text and that's matthias but further nothing okay so be aware of that fact so the big picture look at when you read the story for yourself examine the pieces every story has major scenes in it you have to find the scenes of the story again give a title to the scenes in the story then give a brief description of the setting of each scene and you see you're actually already working on the text itself the time the year the time of the day the significance of uh, the place where things happening for example there's a difference between when uh, Peter and John going to the temple then Peter and John going to the synagogue because the setting is totally different when you go to the temple that's the centerpiece of the center of the whole of the religious system of the Jewish nation when you go to the synagogue that's the the local I would say equivalent but it's not really an equivalent but it's locally so there's a there's a, a specific uh, difference list the major characters list the major groups in each of the scenes give a brief description for yourself of the characters or of the groups in each scene appearances relationship personalities and so on think about what new information uh, each scene adds identify those host points sorry identify whose point of view each scene is told from in the book of acts you have a number of stories being told by Luke but he's retelling them and then you have a number of stories he's not retelling because because he's telling the stories and he's including himself and so you have to find a way of looking at both number four when you have done this review the whole story read the entire story again when you for example when you read the, the chapter 2 about the, the day of Pentecost look at it from verse 1 to the last verse verse 42 look at it go and see okay what is what is different from in verse 1 and in verse 42 what is the difference here those are the uh, the edges of the story and in the story you have you have a sermon uh, you have a number of baptisms you have a number of new members you have a, a, a number of speakers you have a miracle see so the, one story has a lot of scenes and we have to find for ourselves how do you think the original audience the original audience very important I said it again the original audience not you and me but the original audience how do you think 
they perceive what the writer Luke in this case is saying or was saying. What, what is the difference in background? In Sri Lanka, where I'm now, and by the way, I'm standing in the uh, in the library of uh, of Sait. In the back, you see some books, but there are books over there. There are books over there. There are books over there. So there's, there's a whole range of books because I'm in the library of Sait at Norton Bridge. So that's where I take this or tape this video takes. So please, when I'm doing this at home, uh, well, I'm doing it from my office or from one of the uh, the small studios. So you see, there is there's a difference. Uh, here I, I see the sun and I see trees and I see mountains. Uh, once in a while there is a, a bird that flies, and and sometimes we have a problem with the mosquitoes here, or even uh, we had a a bird coming into one of the windows and, and so on okay so it's, so it's a different different because we don't have that or I don't have that when I'm in Belgium teaching there because I'm teaching here at the, at the school uh, I taught already uh, the, the, the the course on apologetics and next month that's acts and uh, we are going to teach or I'm going to teach hermeneutics next month to a group of people who really need that information as you need this information but those people are interacting with me then and you are not so I'm, I'm, I'm speaking to you in a more general way when I'm with uh, the students of course I will interact directly in this case it's a bit more uh, a bit more separated, a bit more f from a distance. So review the whole story, uh, look at the historical background, and does the, the historical back background make uh, makes a difference? Let me let me explain this to you. Uh, look at, for example, one of the what we call minor prophets, and uh, the situation he is in, or they were in at that time. For example, they came back from uh, from exile, and now they are in the land, and they see the land, the, the city of Jerusalem being destroyed, the the temple being destroyed, and so they have to rebuild the whole city and the whole temple. That's of course different from a difference from a, a scene where you have Jesus walking into the temple or later the apostles walking into the temple or even later on after the year 70 when the the, the, the temple was destroyed again and and the the people of israel the, the jewish people they were spread all over in the diaspora all over the world so different in geography different in background different in history look at uh, you know, when, when you see those things, uh, try to find other verses that also speak about the same situation. For example, when you take one of the uh, uh, one of the pro small minor prophets, you can go to another minor prophet from the same time, or you can see that in some cases minor prophets and major prophets are actually living next to each other. They are both having a, a prophetic ministry in the same area in the new testament it's different when you are talking from the point of view of jerusalem or for, for example uh, or from uh, uh, antioch or rome or ephesus see that's what, what that's what i'm saying there are differences in uh, in what uh, this where the scenery is taking place so look for keywords look for phrases look for ideas is anything repeated uh, for example uh, you, you, you find a miracle of feeding the 5,000 being repeated in a certain sense by the miracle of 4,000 being uh, fed by Jesus well it's not exactly the same thing but it's it gives you an idea 
and then you can go back into the old testament and look is something like that happening okay we have a story of a of an old lady uh she's poor and and something is multiplying all the time until she uh she fills all the jars she has that's not the same thing but it gives you the idea of the miracle and then you can ask yourself the question is something left out of you for example the eight apostles in the book of acts where are they okay on the other hand is something emphasized for, for example the um the the story of how the church came into being you see the church moving from jerusalem to rome that's a that's an evolution towards another place so the first time you had 120 maybe 500 members and when uh, when paul enters rome by the way the church is already in existence he doesn't have to uh, doesn't have to to start a church it's not a church planter in rome because the church is already planted there but yeah <laughs> you, you can feel there's a difference church number one in uh, in jerusalem church number two in rome or in in any other place ephesus or antioch or laodicea or philippi or you know you, you can just fill a, a name in where we find churches where we still find churches by the way most of the time um, when you try to review the whole story just think about it look at other verses in the bible that supports or clarify your idea about the topics in that story okay number five think about the application what do we do how do we, do we apply well we apply the, um, the story according to certain rules we cannot just say okay this what it says this what it means yeah do you follow the rules according for, I mean for the application okay let, let's let's look at it totally from a totally different point of view you have a job interview and they ask you to fill in a form with your name and your address and, and uh, email address and, and so on and, and what you have done before what, what studies you have done where where have you worked and, and so on and so on what are your sisters your brothers your father your mother and so they asked all oh, you know when it says uh, street you don't put there your first uh, email or if you don't put an email address there when it says town it doesn't mean the town where you went to to go for uh, for studies no I mean, according to the set rules you have to do exactly what is asked and that's with application also the same thing how do you think the readers of Luke were responding to what Luke was was writing to them? You have to see, you have to look for things like uh, in that story, and a number of stories in in the Book of Acts talk about sin, sin that people had to avoid if they have to avoid it i also have to avoid that you have to avoid that that is a general rule you see something is wrong that is being uh being talked to by the apostles and you know we can learn from that saying okay i have to do the same thing maybe it's a command to obey an example to follow or learn something about god or the church so there are many things you can add here 
and then you have what we call attitudes and actions when you see things happening then you have to ask yourself um, is this part of a culture the culture at that time is this part of a, uh, a church ministry is this part of my own life uh, when I read when I read this story do I automatically say amen praise the Lord or do I say oh sad what steps can I take to get closer to God because of this so you see the application is quite important number six it doesn't stop there now we go to to others we have done all these things before uh, the, the praying the big picture the uh, the pieces the review of the whole story think about the application and now we are going to encourage others that's what that's what I'm doing now with you okay I, I read the story I worked my way through the story I taught the story in other uh, other times four years ago I was here and taught the same story although it's slightly different now and someone else also thought about uh, sorry talked about uh, the book of Acts so yes I know there are different point of view and that's okay fine there's nothing wrong with having two points of view of the same story okay encourage others write down any thoughts or ideas that affected you affected you as a person tell someone else of what you have learned so don't keep it for yourself I'm not keeping it for yourself for myself I'm not bringing it to you tell someone how this passage affected you and what plans you have or plans you have made to apply this truth or pray for others who came to your mind came into your mind when you thought about it while you were studying tell others how they can pray for you that's also important because you are now part of my prayer chain I pray for you every day of course I cannot pray for you every day in the sense that I, I can uh, list all your names uh, because uh, many of you I don't even know I would like to know you and I would like to invite you to come to say it if possible if not we will talk about how that goes in the, in the future pray with others about what you have learned okay so these are the first things this is just the first part the beginning of everything I need to inform you that there are a number of things we are expecting from you one thing is and I said that already you have to read the whole book of Acts but not just read it okay make a story make make a book report on the book of Acts one one page a four that's fine to me as long as you have read it as long as you have done this that is important for you not for me it's important for you so that's one thing we, we I would like you to do then uh, in the uh, in the booklet the, the manual called act as you can see act we have a at the end on page 71 in one of the um, what is called appendixes appendices you have a list of questions and I would like you to read the questions and answer the questions there are 19 in all they are called principles and so please uh, do according to the principles so that's another thing and then uh, what you have to do also I'm sorry it's still a list of what you have to do it's watch the movie the movie the acts the book of acts it's a 90 
1994 movie with uh, brawling in there uh, very good acting uh, a, a nice piece of work much better than uh, the, the much younger version uh, they, they, they made another version of the book of acts i mean like uh, in a film film wise and I, I was not happy with it because there was yeah there was nudity in there and there were uh, uh, three different types of baptisms in it i, I don't like that okay I, I, please so read the book make a book report fill in the, the 19 principles watch the movie and make a film report like a book report so this is just the beginning okay we are now we are beginning so in this case we are talking about the book of acts the book of acts like i, like I told you before uh, book of acts is a book a storybook written by a person that was at least partly um, partly present at the time of writing because it, it's already speaking or is writing his own notes rewriting them because he uses the term we that means he is included so that's what you have when you have an eyewitness that's one thing he is an eyewitness of certain things but he was not eyewitness of everything so he was going to other people and asked them so he interviewed a number of people uh, under under which we find some very important people not only Peter which is of course a very important person certainly in the beginning of the, of, of the church but also the mother of Jesus Mary and the other Marys he interviews them and he's talking about what happened and so he brought together from the eyewitnesses he brought these reports together and that's what he says in the beginning of the book of Acts let's let's look at it and and you will see how clear this in my former book so he's saying I read I, I, I had another book Theophilus that is a name a name that's well being used because you can find Theophilus in the list of the fathers of uh, of at least two of the high priests so the name was well known so uh, I the only thing I can do is assume that it was a person it's not someone who loved God it was a name of a person according to my understanding so in my former book Theophilus I wrote all about all um, that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen after his suffering he showed himself to those men and gave them many convincing proof and he proves that he was alive he appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God on one occasion and you can go on again in, in the text but what is important that is that uh, he brings together a whole the whole a whole range of stories uh, from eyewitnesses and where he and in other parts he's he himself is an eyewitness again with in the uh, proximity of another eyewitness namely in this case Paul in other cases other people so uh, but he writes down certain things and I'm sure that he would not write down the title of the book he would not say this is the Acts of the Apostles because it's yeah, I must almost say it's not the Acts of the Apostles because it's the Acts of two Apostles only four are mentioned maybe five but that's it that's all there is 
okay please this is not this is not a right title but that is the title is given later on remember the titles are not inspired titles are not inspired so he does not put a title in and in by the way he does not put his own name in there he's just writing it down he writes to a person called Theophilus and he's sending that material to that person that's a, a whole range of materials he is sending and he's doing that for a very specific uh, purpose so look at it here see and go for it so we can say I'm just giving it because uh, I have to tiptoe walk on eggs because um, some people are kind of itchy about this let me give you another title act or better to say some acts of certain apostles because not all the acts are being mentioned and not all the apostles are being mentioned when you do not have all of them you cannot say this is the book of of acts of all the apostles this is the book of acts of two apostles peter and paul and um, john is mentioned and james is mentioned and and that's that, that's it oh wow oh uh, that's a bit thin to call it the book of acts of the apostles but that's that's what happened in the second century people saying okay we would we would put the, the, the title on it of uh, acts of the apostles so okay fine that's that's how it is historically known to us and even today when you book um, sorry when you buy a bible and you, you open it you will see in the book that's the title of the book we are not going into that anymore uh, except that that is what we have what we found let us now look at the authorship we are going to go into that again another time but I'm, I'm just going to touch on it here so that you will know what we are talking about when we speak about for example we say it uh, it is uh, written by uh, by Luke then you have to understand what I'm talking about because in the book of Acts remember it, it said uh, in my former book Theophilus I wrote about Jesus and so on and now I'm writing to you in the same way in the same manner in the same thing uh, but please think about this and, and we will see that uh, the, the, the time wise is also extremely important uh, he the, 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 the writer himself let, let's let's say it is it is Luke okay and let's keep it that way so Luke writes the book of Acts and in that book of Acts he is actually presenting himself as an eyewitness of a number of in a number of cases in other places he's just talking about someone else doing certain things in in cases in from uh, chapter 16 on he's actually speaking about himself and he only disappears uh, uh, later on again and then he pops up again and then at the end we know that he was with Paul in Rome so the authorship uh, for this for the sake of argument that's Luke there's a lot of information in the books Luke, Gospel of Luke and the book of Acts and you can compare it and you can see that it's very clearly the same person who is writing and probably doing the same thing except it's not not anymore about uh, about Jesus Christ but now he's talking about what the church is doing of course the church is being led by the Spirit and by the Lord Jesus Christ so they are talking about Jesus Christ all the time while they are speaking under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit I think that is important for us to to see it and to know it uh, let's look at the number two that here on the, on the screen that is the design uh, let me let me let me read under the title of design the design of Luke's gospel 
was to give an, ex an exhibition of the character and the work of Christ as seen in his history until he was taken up from his disciples into heaven. That is what we read in the beginning of the book of Acts. And Acts, it is the sequel to give an illustration of the power and the working of the gospel when it's preached to other nations. Beginning at Jerusalem, we will talk about that again later, uh, but that's the design, okay? That is how you look at it. The opening sentences of Acts and, and Luke are close to identical, and they are not close to identical just because you are close to identical, but they are close to identical because that is the way the people did it at that time. Even uh, uh, Flavius Josephus would do the same thing, and he will write down the material saying, okay, this is what what I give you, and, as, and I, uh, I write to another person, of course. He's not writing to uh, Theophilus, and is presenting his first book and his second book in the same way as what we have seen here with the book of Luke and the book of Acts. And then you have uh, what what we call the uh, uh, the uh, political leadership in the time of Acts, because that is that is important to know. There are four emperors during that time. Uh, sorry, five, you have Augustus, you have Tiberius, Galigula, Claudius, and Nero. All of them, they put their, their stamp on the story. Augustus, when he's saying, okay, I need to know uh, who's living where and where they come from, uh, up to Nero, he's saying, okay, I'm going to kill those Christians because they are atheists, they are heathen, they do not believe in our gods, they believe in one god, and then, then they, not, they do not even have, a, have an image of him, uh, so they are atheists. Well, it's a good story for, for an emperor called Nero. It, today it would be <laughs> difficult to sell that story, but yeah. Okay, then you have a number of people that are mentioned in um, in the New Testament. For example, Herod the Great, Herod Antipas, Pontius Pilate, uh, Herod Agrippa the first, Herod, Agrippa, Herod, Herod Agrippa the second, Antonius Felix, and Portius Festus. All of them have titles. They are the kings, the tetrarch, the prefect, the ruler the procurator, uh, okay, and next to all this, you have a number of um, high priests, the, the priests of the uh, religion of the Jews, namely Judaism. Let me say it this way, Old Testament theology. And you have a whole range it's difficult to, to give all the names, but let's 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 give let, let's give some. So you will you will see what I'm talking about. That's very ingenious. Uh, Ananel, Aristobulus, Ananel again, uh, Jesus, jo Joshua the son of Phabus, Simon the son of Portus, and then you have Matthias the son of Theophilus, uh, Joa, Joaza the son of Portius. Eliezer, uh, Jesus again, and, uh, Joshua, another, another father there, Joshua, again, the Butius, uh, Anasis again, uh, Ishmael, Eliezer, Simon, uh, jo Joseph, Caiaphas, that's the one we know, uh, uh, Jonathan, son of Ananus, Theophilus, the son of Ananus, uh, Simon, Cantheas, Matthias, uh, Elior Niles, Jonathan, Joseph, uh, Ananias, Jonathan again, Ishmael, Joseph Gabby, Ananias, Jesus the son of Demnius, Jesus Joshua the son of Gamaliel, remember Gamaliel, very famous, famous name, and Matthias the son of Theophilus, and then it, the last one in year 60, uh, 67 to 70, that's uh, Pallias, 
so you have a whole range of people who are high priests and, and yeah for the Jews that's extremely important for us that's a little bit less important but it's good to know and you you will find the uh, information in, uh, in in the book which is called Acts and it's uh, compiled by me so there are uh, other people writing into it and I'm just using their material don't think that I know everything about the book of Acts and that that's no but we are going to look at certain things that are very important even before we can start about uh, the, the, the text itself and, and look at the text for example um, the four big traveling trips of Paul are mentioned in this book that's the first, the second, and the third missionary journey, and then Paul's journey to Rome. The first missionary journey is from in chapters 13 and 14. The, the second missionary journey is from chapter 15 to 18, and the third missionary journey begins in 18, ends in 20, and then you have the, the trip from Paul to Rome starting in chapter 21 to chapter 28. As I said before, we have no idea why it stopped there. Is that because Paul died? Because Luke died? Because Luke went away from Rome? We don't know. The only thing we know is that that is what is happening. On page 7, you will find a timeline. Of course, it's not a very detailed timeline, but it gives you some idea and it's important that you know certain things for example that Jesus is not born in the year zero because the year zero does not exist and not in the year one and not in the year two okay and then you have uh, the crucifixion which is around the year 30 maybe 31 33 we don't know yet we don't know exactly because there's, there was a mix-up with dates and numbers bef in the beginning when we started with the uh, the, the Christian counting of the years and now the Christian counting of the years is universal up to the time of what is called the, the, the temple in Jerusalem are destroyed in the year 70 and 71 since that is not mentioned we are quite sure that Paul died before that okay so we we have the authorship we have the design we have the uh, uh, the first missionary the second missionary journey third missionary journey and the journey from Paul to Rome 